welcome back to the Friday q and I'm just wearing my Eclipse UPF 50 shirt here today, appropriate for the video. As you can tell from the title and thumbnail, today I'm going to be answering all of your questions about sun protective clothing and what types of fabrics help keep our skin safe from the damaging effects of ultraviolet radiation. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Andrea. I am a dermatologist and I film um, some fun vlogs of my life as well as a lot of skincare focused content. So if that type of thing is of interest to you, then please subscribe for all of the fun. But anyways, moving right along, to recap a little bit for those of you who are new, ultraviolet radiation comes from the sun. It is not the same as visible light. In other words, visible light that comes from the sun is the light that we see with our eyes and we detect as daylight. Ultraviolet radiation, however, we don't ever appreciate with our eyeballs. We don't ever detect that in our brain, but it is the component of sun that directly has biologic consequences on our skin and our overall health. Ultraviolet radiation is broken down into different categories. There is UVB, uh, which is the category of ultraviolet light that directly damages the DNA in our skin, leads to skin cancers, and also burns our skin. That is what is responsible for a sunburn. UVA, on the other hand, is another component of ultraviolet light that comes from the sun that, unlike UVB, penetrates much more deeply into our skin, damages the deeper layers of the skin, leading to wrinkles and photoaging of the skin. Not only that, UVA suppresses the immune system and affects the immune system in the skin, can trigger a variety of inflammatory skin conditions, can also contribute to post-inflammatory post hyperpigmentation, dispigmentation, and melasma. Visible light uh, does have some impact on our skin health as well, particularly for those of you out there with hyperpigmentation. We now know that uh, broader wavelengths of visible light out into the blue and, and violet range can actually contribute to persistence of melasma and hyperpigmentation. Photoprotection involves both the use of a broad spectrum sunscreen as well as sun protective clothing. Sun protective clothing is that which is manufactured uh, from UV protecting fabrics that are designed to block transmission of ultraviolet light through the fabric so that the wearer is protected underneath the fabric. UPF is very similar to SPF of our sunscreens. SPF of our sunscreens, just to recap, reflects the ability of the sunscreen to protect us mostly from UVB and the, uh, the consequence of UV, UVB, namely a burn, okay? So SPF in our sunscreens reflects the ability of the sunscreen to protect us from a burn. UPF in, in fabrics, in treated fabrics, reflects the ability of the fabric to protect us largely from the biologic consequence of UVB penetration penetrating the fabric, namely a burn, all right? So they're very, they're very similar concepts. Uh, and you, uh, universal protective factor of 15 is, is fairly decent coverage. However, 30 is obviously much better. And universal protective factor of 50, 50 is kind of the, the upper limit of, of where the rating system falls. Anything that's 50 is superior and wonderful. A lot of fabrics will be rated as 50 plus because they claim to supersede the 50 threshold. And per Australian guidelines, sun protective clothing has to not only demonstrate a UPF, but it also has to, the fabric also has to maintain that UPF for two years of normal wear and tear of the fabric. So day-to-day -day washing, you know, week or excuse me, weekly washing of the clothing for two years. After two years, it still has to have that that UPF. So clothing companies that uh, you know tout UPF standards um, and and claim to follow. Australian um, Australian guidelines and Australian regulations that are here in the United States um, are presumably following this rubric. For example, Cooley Bar uh, uh, claims to to follow the standards set by Australia in demonstrating the efficacy of their fabrics in protecting protecting the skin. Now, as many of you have pointed out, uh, a lot of the UPF 
clothing is it's pretty expensive pro and it may not be in your budget coolie bar in particular you know they um they 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 make their their claim for the price point of their products and that they have a lifetime guarantee um and that they have been certified by the skin cancer foundation and they follow the australian standards um and you know that sort of thing but you know do you have to go out and buy an entire coolie bar wardrobe for enjoying outdoor activities the answer is no there's a very good chance that there are clothes there's already clothing in your closet or dresser that can offer you similar upf protection it just depends on the a variety of things as far as the features of the fabrics that are used and the and and uh, that sort of thing. So, what factors affect how a fabric of, or an article of clothing uh, protects your skin against against ultraviolet radiation? First of all, the material. I'll talk a little bit more about that. How the 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 material is constructed, um, and. If you have washed it numerous times and the fabric has shrunk, that actually increases the UPF because it shrinks down the pores that allow uh, UV to penetrate. So having having washed the clothing and um, put it through a dryer and, and allowed it to shrink, it increases the, the universal protective factor of the fabric alone. How the, any finishing that is put on the fabric itself, uh, a lot of fab, most fabrics are treated with things and depending on what they're treated with, that, that can play a role. The color, if the fabric was dyed, that can definitely play a role. Um, and then importantly, the moisture content of the fabric. Wet fabrics um, allow more UV light to go through than dry fabrics. Very important for you to be aware of, particularly while you're out by the pool and um, you know at the beach this summer. What fabrics are good and reliable? The fabric that offers the best protection against UV on its own is actually 100% polyester. That's because polyester has a benz what's called a benzene ring in it, and that is actually like a sunscreen, all right? So 100% polyester is, is wonderful. Then obviously the weave of the fabric plays a huge role. Tighter weave fabrics, like denim for example, <laughs> obviously don't allow any light to pass through and are going to give you better protection than sheer fabrics. A good test of this is to hold the fabric up to a window and if light comes, if visible light comes through, chances are, you know, obviously ultraviolet light's going to come through and it is not going to be your best bet. I also mentioned the treatment, how the fabrics were treated. A lot of fabrics are bleached, um, and unbleached fabrics, unbleached cottons, uh, offer better protection than bleaching. Bleaching um, allows more light to penetrate. In addition to 100% polyester, unfortunately, the best, the other best, best fabric is merino wool. Have fun with that here in Texas this summer. <laughs> Who wants to be donning a 100% a merino wool cloak? Nobody, all right? You will overheat very, very quickly. Um, so 100% merino wool, like in a baseball cap, for example, really, really excellent protection. The color of the fabric is paramount. Black and blue, better than white and lighter colors. So who doesn't want to be donning a black wool suit all summer long, all right? You will definitely, definitely be in the house of pain. <laughs> the other tip with your fabrics is that looser fitting fabrics are actually better because when they drape um, and fold on themselves, the, 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 the excess fabric, it doubles up, all right? Unlike, unlike layering SPF, putting putting a thicker and thicker and thicker layer of SPF 30 on your face of a sunscreen, you're never gonna, it's not like you're gonna get to 90 with three applications of an SPF 30. With your sun protective clothing, however, you can compound the protection just by having the fabric fold over on itself. And while that may not be super relevant for your clothing, when you're at the beach, um, towels and things like that keep that in mind if you have a young child a baby under a you know in a, in a um <laughs> obviously i don't have kids in a in a pram in a stroller <laughs> who says pram anymore <laughs> anyways um you know the fabrics that that you're covering the baby in do uh, do appreciate the fact that when it's doubled up it increases the the universal protective 
factor of the fabric. Um, and then satin finished silk also offers very good protection as well. All right, so the silks that are that have a sat sateen finish, much better. But fabrics that offer poor protection are like a standard, particularly bleached, white cotton t-shirt, very, very poor protection, like a man, man's undershirt. No, 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 no. That, that is kind of like a, you know, a UPF of two. I mean, it's, it's not giving you any protection. Bleached cotton in particular, you know, allows more light to go through. Viscous, sheer fabrics, uh, you know, kind of gauzy material, not good enough, definitely. Um, and then undyed fabrics, less protection. Fabrics that are dyed um, give you better protection because a lot of the dyes, similar to polyester, have these ring-like structures that can actually absorb uh, ultraviolet radiation, similar to chemical sunscreens. Uh, the dyes in, in your fabrics, like aniline dyes and a lot of blue fabrics, um, and the dyes used to, to dye things black, uh, that that can give you better protection. The other the other tip that I will give you, I mentioned um, the the hydration of the fabric. If the fabric gets wet, that increases the amount of UV that will penetrate through. So what's really important for you and your family and your young children is that when you're at the beach, um, or if you you're out playing and if they go out and play in one of those fountains they often have in a park and they get wet, they should put on dry clothing and you know change out of the wet clothing and put on dry clothing immediately. Um, I know you don't always plan for these things, but do be aware that once the clo once clothing gets wet, it um, allows more ultraviolet light to come through. So change out, change out to dry clothing definitely. And you know, for me personally, investing in Cooley Bar has been incredibly worthwhile. They don't know I exist. I'm not sponsored by them. I simply, I mean, I've been buying their clothing for years, long before I was on YouTube. It lasts forever. The quality is amazing. Um, you know, I don't, I don't do my own, um, you know, I don't have a spectrophotometer to actually measure the efficacy of of the UPF in their clothing, but there was one small, small study that looked at one of the kids' bathing suits from Cooley Bar, and it does, in fact, offer the UPF that they that they claim. And so that was that was independently demonstrated by by um, you know a, a group of dermatologists um, in a small study. So I have a lot of confidence in their products. It's been a good investment for me. I do recognize that it's expensive. Another option outside of buying UPF clothing or you know buying a whole new wardrobe is a dye, is a dye that you can buy by RIT called SunGuard. SunGuard is actually Tinisorb, the chemical filter that is approved for use in sunscreens in Europe and Japan and other countries. That is a phenomenal UV blocker. SunGuard is a dye that is basically tinisorb. Uh, it's a colorless dye um, that you can put in your wash. I'll link it down below. It's made by RIT. Uh, it's pretty inexpensive, and I believe it uh, it will impart a, a universal protective factor of about 30 to a fabric. So it'll take a male's a male's uh, white t-shirt, for example, like an undershirt that I was ragging on earlier, from a five a UPF of five to a 30. So you know it's a good way to amp up what you already have. It gets you uh, it, it lasts for about 20 washes, which is pretty good. And all you need to do is put it in. Uh, with your in your washing machine on, on a warm or hot cycle for one wash and you know that treats the fabric so that is another option and one I strongly encourage it's a more affordable approach than investing in a whole new a whole new wardrobe then the other article of sun protective clothing that is key in everyone's wardrobe is a sun protective hat um, specifically a hat with a seven centimeter brim. And the reason I say this is that we know from studies that a, sa uh, a hat with seven centimeter uh, of brim will get you um, a UPF of, uh, an SPF of seven on your forehead and roughly five on your cheeks as well as an average of three on your nose, all right? So that, 
that compounds your sunscreen on your face and gives you better protection. The other reason for the sun protective hat is protecting your scalp, okay? Um, it's really, people don't like wearing sunscreen in their, their scalp. I've mentioned in my other videos that liquid sunscreens are an option, but it's really hard to put sunscreen in your scalp all the time, particularly for day-to-day -day use. But when you're walking across a, a parking lot with an exposed scalp, I mean, that is a recipe for sun damage. Skin cancers in the scalp are incredibly common and a nuisance for you, the individual who suffers from them, uh, because they, the management of them can be a little bit more complicated. The skin up there, there's less, there's less to play, play around with as far as removing the skin cancer and covering up the, the hole. Um, so the surgeon has to be more clever and borrow skin from other areas. It can be very difficult to, to remove and a pain for you, the individual. Hair does protect the scalp a little bit, but not 100% for sure. Um, but if you have lost your hair or have bald spots, bald patches, areas of hair loss, hair thinning, really, really, really important. You know, if you have male or female pattern hair loss, definitely you need to be wearing that hat out there um, for sure. Then the last point that I will make um, about sun protective clothing that I'm sure I'll get some questions about, I haven't gotten, gotten yet. Visible light, I already mentioned, is the light that we see with our eyes, different colors, tells us it's daylight out. And if you'll recall at the beginning of this video and if you followed any number of my videos, particularly those about hyperpigmentation, dark spots, and melasma, you will appreciate the fact that visible light, particularly in the blues to violet range, can contribute to persistence of hyperpigmentation. Now we know that sunscreens that contain zinc or titanium dioxide, as well as the inactive ingredient iron oxides, can get you some coverage into those, those wavelengths of visible light. But what about sun protective clothing? Does the UPF of a fabric reflect visible, does that mean that it gives you good protection against visible light? Turns out not so much, um, which is unfortunate, all right? Um, there is one small study that I found that looks at this because I was curious about it myself. Polyester, we know, is, as I said, is the best for giving you protection against the wavelengths of ultraviolet light that lead to a burn um, and so polyester fabrics are gonna have the highest UPF. Unfortunately, polyester fabrics do less well at protecting against visible light that can lead to hyperpigmentation and melasma. In this study for, and in this study for visible light, it turns out that fabrics that are nylon, um, made out of flax, which I didn't even really know was a fabric component, but I guess flax um, is, offered better protection against visible light than those that um, than those that were polyester. So that is just one study that I found about visible light and fabric protection. I tell you this because I advocate for people, particularly with melasma, if they're going out like skiing, um, to protect their, their face using a face shield. Really, really helpful for protecting against UV light, particularly if the fabric's been treated in a UPF at 50, you know, you can feel confident in it at least. But do be aware that based on the study, that may not may not protect you against those visible wavelengths that also contribute to the melasma and hyperpigmentation. So in other words, you should still wear, wear a sunscreen to help protect against that. Um, I wouldn't just rely on the face shield alone, but the face shield is, is a very important additional measure but you can see this is a face shield, a neck and face shield that Coolie Bar makes. I mean, it's basically like a gray tube, right? I um, have this, but I've never worn it because it's a little hot. But this is designed to protect your neck and then uh, for you to be able to, to put it up over your face. So like, you know, when you're on the golf course or out, you know, playing tennis outside, uh, you know, you can pull this up over your face and have protection on it. This protects the lower half of the face. But, you know, like I just said, as far as the protection against visible light, I'm not, you know, it's hard to say for sure that this, that this gets, you, gets you that complete protection against that blue light. So do be aware of that. 
But anyways, guys, the take home point here is that like sunscreen, sun protective clothing does also have shortcomings on, it, on its own. So neither are good enough alone. You need to wear the sunscreen along with the sun protective clothing and you need to be aware of when peak sun exposure hours are depending on where in the world you are and the time of day. A good, uh, a good app that I like is uh, Coppertone makes one, I mean there are tons of them, that will help tell you the UV index. Um, that is a helpful clue to just kind of be aware of, ooh, I was going to go out and run errands and be outside, but the, the UV index right now is is 11. Um, and maybe I will wait until this evening. <laughs> um, you know, it can kind of help you in that way. But definitely check that app. Um, if you have a disease like lupus, for sure. I mean, these are really, really important for your health. But for everybody, they're important for protecting against photo aging of the skin and skin cancer, as well as that gosh darn sunburn that nobody wants. <laughs> But anyways, I hope this video was helpful in kind of addressing your questions to better guide you and help you navigate uh, sun protective clothing and whether or not it's something that you want to invest in or is necessary. You know, buying the Coolie Bar stuff certainly isn't. My rationale personally as a consumer for buying it is that a lot of their fabrics um, are lightweight and water repellent. So they work well with an active lifestyle um, and I've just had good experience with them. But definitely do not need to invest in that. I'm a huge fan of that RIT dye as, um, you know, kind of a, at least, at least washing your beach towels in that and your bathing suits and, and t-shirts, clothing, I think it can be helpful. Pretty inexpensive and it gets you, just be aware of the number of washes that, that you've done uh, with, with the clothing after you have after, you, after you've incubated it in the dye um, and whether or not you need to retreat it. But I think that's that's another really great option. Um, but you know, <laughs> with all that being said, have a fun summer <laughs> in your black merino wool suit. <laughs> uh, but if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll see you guys tomorrow, bye.